Hey there, everybody. This is the Alan Laugh Show. I'm Luke Cogley. So, in the trailer for The Perfect Host, you really, um, you kind of come away with the sense that this movie's going to be about this guy who, um, hides away in an unexpected, uh, victim's house and, uh, who actually turns out to be this serial killer. But that's actually not really what happens in the movie. <clears throat> It was actually this this actually really unexpected twist, um, which I hadn't seen coming at all. Um, I was really surprised by the um, way that this movie. I was really surprised by how this movie kind of ended up turning out. But um, in this, at the same time, I was kind of pleased because it um, threw me off so uh, so greatly. Instead of this being really like easy to follow, um, it really just it takes you through a wild ride of. Um, different story points which you kind of um so you're kind of guessing the entire time it even gets to a point where it's kind of um too hard to follow it sometimes um because there's just so many things going on that you basically have this guy warwick who um turns out who is the serial killer who actually turns out to be this kind of um mentally unstable character who's really just um grappling with reality and he can he can kind of, um, he gets these images of people in his life which really aren't there, which, um, kind of fills in for, uh, the surround, for his surroundings, which is kind of a neat concept and definitely something I, you don't see too often, which is kind of cool. So, um, there's, uh, along with that, you kind of have, um, the story of the bank robber, uh, John, develops a little more. And you get, um, you kind of understand, like, what he's going through. He's kind of, um, struggling with a sick girlfriend. So, um, the way that they build up both of these characters makes both of their cases really interesting and, um, very compelling throughout the entire film. So I think, uh, by doing the, by making it completely, um, kind of a completely unexpected, uh, movie, you really get, um, a better sense of, you really get a better, uh, um, by making this so unexpected, you really get a better sense of just kind of who, uh, both these characters are and really, um, you get to relate to them a lot more than you would if you just, um, kind of knew what was going to happen. So that was definitely a job well done. Uh, the acting in this is just outstanding. I, um, I haven't really seen either of these guys in really anything, so... I was definitely impressed by both their jobs. Um, I thought they were convincing the whole way through, and uh, they definitely held my interest, as I said, just with um, all the interesting points that uh, their characters are going through and that kind of thing. I definitely recommend that you rent this on iTunes or On Demand, or um, if it's playing in a theater somewhere around you, definitely check this out. It's um, a great time. It's a, it's actually really funny at some points, and, and it's not... It's kind of like a really dark humor type thing, but it's like, um, it can be really hilarious at some point. So definitely check it out. It's a whole lot of fun. And the fact that it's on, um, so many, like it's on iTunes, it's on and on demand. It's just available in so many ways. So definitely, um, if you have a chance, uh, sit down and watch it. It's pretty short. So, um, it's, and it's definitely worth the time. So for X-Men First Class, I thought McCavey and Fazbear were just absolutely phenomenal in this movie they um they're the character they're the actors who play um Magneto and Professor X and they just throughout the entire film I loved their characters they were um they were funny they were dark they were, they had a lot of very dramatic moments there was a lot of um just really great story elements that they threw in um I think if I had to say which one was better, I would definitely say Fazbender really made the character ma of Magneto um, just more than it's been before and just kind of um, took it to a whole new level and really made me enjoy his uh, his side of the whole X-Men uh, situation that they're going through in this story. I also have to say that this film really ties together well with all the other films uh, apart from the X-Men Origins Wolverine, uh, it seems like they pretty much have just disregarded 
that film entirely. They really just don't want to handle any of that anymore, which I'm okay with because that was really just kind of a trashy film. It didn't really um, stand up with the rest of them. But um, there is, however, an absolutely hilarious cameo from Hugh Jackman. Um, so if you go see this, definitely look out for him. He's uh, in it just for this one little portion. When Xavier and Eric are trying to hunt down some other mutants and uh, try to recruit, recruit them for uh, the class. Make sure to look out for him because he's um, any fan of these movies will definitely love that. Because this movie um, takes place kind of when they're assembling the whole team, the whole original team, it's really something that they haven't covered before and it, it's something that makes the whole story very much more engaging and um, it really just takes this takes us away from all of the characters that we've seen before and brings a lot of new brings a whole sorts of new abilities and different kinds of powers that we haven't seen before and we really just get a whole we're just overloaded with a whole bunch of fresh interesting characters that we get to see throughout the entire film all of the new powers are really outstanding and visually this movie really stands out because there's just so many new things that we haven't seen before and that really carries through the entire thing so we get a sense of just the magnitude that each of these characters can bring on every scene and there's really just um <clears throat> and we really get an understanding of just how powerful each of these characters can be. It's really good to see this because it shows the audience that there's more of the X-Men than just Wolverine coming out with his claws at the ready. The fact that this movie ties into a lot of the stuff of the 60s and all the um, elements of that period really makes this um, a very free and uh, kind of pliable story because they can really just... Um, they have a lot of room to, they were, because it really gave them a lot of room to just expand on like what they want to go through and kind of where they can take this. Because that's really just a time where there's like so much, there's so much going on and there's so many things, there's so many possibilities. So that was definitely a smart approach and it really worked out uh, definitely as you watch the film. So while Magneto and Professor X really stand out very um, highly in this movie, the rest of the supporting cast is um, pretty flat. I definitely like Kevin Bacon. He was a great villain. His character was very intriguing. His powers even were just like so um, unbelievable and so like next level that you could kind of... There was just so much going for his character. You were really just compelled to see him. Um, you were really compelled every time he was on the screen. But yeah, there's really just like... There's not quite enough on each of the characters they do have like a run through where they're um all tr where all the characters on professor x's team are training and getting ready for this uh upcoming battle but that's really the biggest part biggest parts that we see them in so i would have liked to see a little more of their of each of their backgrounds um just because they're really just throwing us into like a whole new slew of characters that we're going to probably be seeing in a couple more films and it would have been good if they give us a little more for right now so they don't just like keep laying it out in the other films so on that part I would have just added a little more but um, they were definitely interesting to see and it was definitely a good idea of them to bring us a whole bunch of characters that we weren't used to and weren't uh, necessarily ready for most of the outfits in this were a little bizarre. I have no problem with... I really don't have a problem with any of the uh, style of the 60s or anything like that, but there's just so much of this movie has just, like, um, all the outfits in this were really just a little bit too... like, a little overdone at some times. I definitely think they fell short a little bit when it came to Beast and kind of his whole appearance. I don't know if um they could have done a little better but it's just it just seemed a little uh weak at some points but overall the movie did look pretty great the entire time so and because you know that it's supposed to be set when it is you really just go along with the whole thing it was definitely fine the way it looked
this movie definitely keeps up with a lot of good humor. It's not completely just drama and action the whole time. You're uh, constantly given a little uh, little jolt of uh, comedy. You get um, a lot of la you get a lot of laughs from Xavier and the whole X Men team, and this really allows you to kind of relate to them a little more and get an understanding of like who they are and kind of their personalities and all of that. So that was definitely fun. And overall, the dialogue in this is really incredible. I was really impressed by how they made this sound so um, authentic and sound so um, believable throughout the entire film. They really kept the same pace, and um, that really made the this long movie flow by really, really well. And having this well-balanced dialogue really made the movie roll by quite smoothly. So I definitely recommend you check this out in theaters. It's definitely a great spectacle on the big screen and it's a fantastic summer movie definitely one of the top ones that's going to be coming out this summer so definitely go check it out if you're an x-men fan you'll love this movie it's uh better than a lot of the ones that have come out recently um i don't think it's topped x2 x2 was just in my opinion was probably the best one that they're ever going to make but this one definitely stands strong and it brings you a lot of great points that you want to know and a lot of great things that you haven't seen before. So definitely go check it out whenever you get a chance. So that's the end of this episode. As always, subscribe up top. You can leave a comment down below. You can leave a video response. And as always, you can give a thumbs up and like the video. So I'll see you guys next time. And today's question of the day is, what is your favorite X-Men mutant? Can I resist? You